Good morning here from California. Let's discuss the Barcelona versus Valencia game. And here in California, this is a 7 a.m. game. And it really hurts when your team loses first thing in the morning. Valencia did a great job. I mean, that's the first thing you have to accept. Valencia did a great job closing down space. They had a plan. But moreover, Barcelona looked kind of lost. It, it, it looked very concerning. Um, first of all, there's several different issues. But on top of it, if you look at it from a macro level, Barcelona's now given Real Madrid the opportunity to take the number one spot in La Liga. And they've got some easy games coming up. Uh, Valencia, they closed down their space as well. High pressure, took advantage of uh, Barcelona's mistakes. Um, yes, they allowed Barcelona to play with possession, but the possession seemed a little aimless, really. A um, few things. The Barca way is great. Small passes, the quick touches, the getting open, giving people options, playing in a triangle. That's all great when you have an end game. What it looked like today was that Barcelona did not really know what to do once they had possession in the middle. So let's take a look at this lineup first. So it's pretty clear that Kike Setien wants to play three center backs. Once again, that's good if you have three center backs comfortable with playing a three center back uh, game. Umtiti, PK, and Sergio Roberto. In the middle, they had Busquets anchoring the midfield, Jordi Alba on the left, Artur, De Jong, and um, Ansu Fati on the right. Griezmann and Messi up top. Griezmann's now playing a roaming position. He can go wherever he likes. Um, once again, this is great if they understand where to play. The defense left a lot to be desired today. Left a lot to be desired. Let's get into the goals um, and the possible goals for Barcelona. First, in the 10th minute, Barcelona committed a foul in the box by PK. Uh, PK looked a little out of position, tried to make up for it, didn't get to the ball, rolled on to the forward, and committed a penalty. Luckily, Ter Stegen was on fire today. Ter Stegen is now having to take a lot more responsibilities. He had some great saves. He saved the penalty sh shot, um, dove to the left. It was a great save. You, you know, everybody was, whew, thank you. But in the 48th minute, there was a ball being crossed in from the left side. PK tried to clear it. It Basically, all he did was he extended the, the corner, uh, pushed it out to Maxi Gomez, uh, who had entirely too much space. Maxi Gomez, if you're playing possession, if you're playing man mark, if you're playing man mark, Umtiti should have been on him. If you're playing, uh, if you're playing zone, then he need, then it would have been Jordi Alba. But it was clear that nobody really knew who they were marking. So from the top right of the box, Maxi Gomez strikes the ball. Uh, it's a little bit off target, but it hits the hip of Jordi Alba. Goes in. There's not much Ter Stegen could have done for that. He was tracking the ball movement. Then, 77th minute. This, this goal was, was tough to watch. So, once again, Maxi Gomez scores the goal. It's a wide open shot from a transitioning ball to the left. There was a, a forward streaking to the right side. Sergio Roberto was running there. PK was running there. Everybody's running to this other player. Left him wide open back door. Didn't really give Ter Stegen any opportunity to save the ball. Very disappointing. Very bad tracking. And just to be clear here, Sergio Roberto is, you know, he's a natural midfielder who has transitioned to right fullback to work in Valverde's system. And now he's been converted to a center back. I don't know that he possesses all the tools to be a center back. Um, it was a stretch for him being a right fullback. He was able to make the position, but he didn't do it great. Now he's getting caught up in transition play when he's a center back, right? So that's very disappointing. Also, all three of the players that sat out the game against Ibiza, Messi, Busquets, and PK all started slow in this game. That can be expected when you have a team, when you're sitting out a game and coming back into it, but they all started a little slow. Not that there was a lot of bright shining stars um, without the, I mean, with the exception of Ter Stegen. So Barcelona lose two to zero. Could have been more, to be honest. Um, in the 80th minute, there was another goal that was um, actually put in, but it was stopped because of a foul on a corner kick. I'm guessing the the keeper, or I'm sorry, the, the referee stopped the ball, stopped the play, uh, blew the whistle before the ball was kicked. That's the only understanding I could come with that play. 
Uh, but let's really talk about Barcelona's attacking. Um, what's their system, right? So it's okay to have the ball in the middle. It's okay to have possession all in the middle. But when you have your Griezmann and Ansu Fati playing very, very wide, then somebody has got to attack that space. Not really sure who it was supposed to be. You have a free roaming Messi, but at the end of the day, if they pack the middle of it, Griezmann and Ansu Fati aren't natural attackers from the outside to get in to take on a player. Um, then who's going to get the ball in the middle? You know. Also, without any overlapping runs on the right side, right? Because you figure Ansu Fati is playing. He's basically a right striker, but he's playing right mid. So Sergio Roberto doesn't have, especially in this game, did not have the opportunity to over, make overlapping runs on the right side because then you only have two center backs. It's not like Jordi Alba spending a lot of time on the defense anymore. So you've got basically these center backs on an island for the most part. There, you know, there were some good plays. I'm not trying to say everybody played terrible today, but it was ugly. There was possession, but it didn't look like it was possession with a purpose. Purpose. Um, both Arthur and De Jong seemed a little off, right? It looked like their positioning was off. These are very good controlling um, opportunity creating center mids. But when you play a, what, 3-1-4-2, um, their responsibility is to attack. And there didn't seem to be any of the urgency in attacking. Um, that's just the truth. And with no Suarez, you can see how much he does. Let's be honest. Suarez is always where he needs to be. He's a striker that gets assists and makes opportunities uh, for everyone on the field. It's always moving forward play, always attacking. He's always where you need him to be. There's never a hole in the field when Suarez is playing. So some of my highlights, really, they've got to better understand their defensive responsibilities. Kike Setien came in. He's changing from a, you know, four, basically a 4-3-3 to a 3-1-4-2. These players are not used to that. You also have quite a bit of young or newer to the team players that don't necessarily under, understand the system. This team, there's not one single lineup that has played with each other yet. Not one, you know? And then, so there's a lot to be learned. Also, another thing I noticed, Arthur in the first half, he, he was doing a lot of complaining. If he thought somebody passed the ball where he didn't want it to go, he was throwing his hands up. Uh, he was complaining and yelling. That's really never a good thing. You really don't want to see that when, when a team is, uh, you know, tied 0-0 or, and then especially when they're losing. Um, so that wasn't good. But then again, you know, he was actually subbed in the 55th minute. Um, and, right, Arturo Vidal went in. Um, he actually did a good job of cleaning up some of the responsibilities, started creating more opportunities. Also, another thing, Ansu Fati got killed on that right side. He was stuck on that right side. Whenever he got the ball, best case scenario, he passed it back to Sergio Roberto. Worst case scenario, he ran into a, a, a wall of two defenders and either brought it back or lost it. He, he's very young. You have to be patient with a player like this. This is a big stage, so you do not want to blame him for the opportunity. Also, Barcelona doesn't have a lot of options. I mean, that's just the facts. Uh, Sergio Roberto was just getting caught out of position. I'm not sure um, right now. Well, it's clear right now he doesn't understand what a center back needs to do or where he needs to be. That's not something that can't be trained, right? Kike Setien has got his uh, workload cut out for him. He may be able to create some new opportunities and create some new learning experiences for him. But right now, it's not there. Also, uh, Kayato came in at the 84th minute for, um, well, he went in for Ansu Fati. Um, I think that's the thing to come, right? For a player, now that the depth chart, no Dembele, no Luis Suarez. Uh, right now, he didn't have a lot of options. I believe Ansu Fati would have been subbed out much sooner, but there's not a lot of options. So him coming in is opening up the possibility for some playing time for him. Um, Messi was, he was roaming free uh, but also he, at the end he had to start trying to force it and he was doing all he could um, he was a little off on some of his free kicks which is to be expected for any player in the world um, but he was out there forcing it trying to create all the opportunities he could Ivan Rakitic came in for De Jong and once again like I highlighted Arthur and and De Jong were a little off in this game and I don't believe it's because their skills aren't there I believe it's because they don't know their responsibilities so the, my key takeaway from this disappointing 2-0 loss, which could have been worse, first off, Kike Setien has got to sit down and really lay out each player's responsibilities. 
Um, don't just assume because they're playing in space, they're always gonna find a hole. Because a lot of people defer to Messi creating the space in the middle. But when you have so many offensive players in the same space, they're gonna have to lay it out until they get this ball rolling because it's very complicated for them to know what to do. It's clear the defense needs direction. Stop, you know, just giving up these obvious wide open shots. The midfield has to understand the responsibilities of attacking, getting into open space. If we're gonna play two forwards or wings, we gotta uh, create it. We have to, uh, the players need to understand. Ansu Fati, are you supposed to drag in? He doesn't look, he didn't look comfortable taking on someone from the wide right side. Uh, Griezmann was making lots of runs in and out, but sometimes I noticed even Jordi Alba was playing balls to lead him into space that he he was going the opposite direction. So it's clear they got to clean some of this up, get some experience together, and and hopefully bring this bring this system to a head to where it can be competitive against the hardest teams. But with that being said, Valencia's Valencia's no joke. So it's not like Barcelona lost to a bad team, um, but they were definitely. Um, taken to task. They were. So hopefully Barcelona gets back to the drawing board and we can have a better game moving forward uh, with some clear direction. Not sure if Barcelona is going to go out and get a striker or a forward. Um, it's clear that there's a need. Uh, I mean, I think this game really, really cemented how important Luis Suarez is for this team. All right, guys, hopefully the next game's better. Everyone enjoy your Saturday. Uh, talk to everyone soon.